Welcome back for a, another episode of the Kamiata 400 wheel horsepower build. Uh, so I don't know if we've covered this yet. Uh, it depends on if Dylan covers it or not in his episodes, but we're going to do this build season a little bit different. Last year when we did this swap and Dylan's swap, we kind of just compiled videos until we had everything and we could kind of post it in stages for you guys. Since we're doing this really only a couple weeks apart from posting. Uh, it's the beginning of November now. You'll probably see this in uh, two, three weeks from now. We don't have time to build a backlog uh, with the YouTube schedule and all that stuff. So we're going to do a more vlog style uh, type of content and we hope it works out for you guys and for us. So what's gonna happen is uh, Dylan and I both work full-time jobs. So I can't be out here, you know, 10 hours a day working on the car Monday through Friday doing these crazy builds in a week. So we're gonna vlog if I post on Saturday, that Saturday's video is going to have the previous week's work in it. Uh, and at the beginning of the episode, I'm going to try and list out what we're going to try and accomplish. And I'm going to try and get it all done so you guys have some episode closure at the end of the episode that you're watching. Uh, so, this thing, before we start putting any cool parts on it, we got to take some parts off it. It seems a bit like a Ponzi scheme. I'm selling parts from this to buy more parts from this. Uh, but with that being said, Transmission has to go, clutch has to be upgraded, uh, all sorts of little things. Exhaust has to be modified for the turbo, so we gotta get to that. But, so today is Tuesday. The hit list for this week is to take, drain all the coolant, drain the oil, uh, the transmission oil, take the trans out and all the supporting stuff like the drive shafts and whatnot, uh, take the clutch and pressure plate off flywheel is going to stay and take the radiator out and that should be it. I got a guy buying the clutch, pressure plate, trans and slave. Uh, he's coming on Monday. So I really have to have it out this week. And at the time of filming this, I'm also building ahead for our buddy Joe, uh, Turbo Joe. You saw his review somewhere over here. Uh, he's going for 300 plus horsepower. So we're building him a ported 99 to 2000 head. I believe it's a 99. I uh, just picked it up from the machine shop. like two hours ago and we're going to be doing some Volvo springs on it and things like that so if you want to check that out uh, there's the link for that video here uh, we did a ASMR assembly video on it and we will definitely be doing some stuff with his car next year just to show you guys uh, the upgrades from his old gear or his old turbo setup uh, on the 94 block to his EFR setup on a 99 head uh, and some piston frauds and all sorts of supporting mods. So stick around for that, but we're gonna get moving on this thing because uh, you know, my evenings are the only time I have to work on this car and I have a ton of work to do before the end of the week. So first things first, let's change out of this cleanish clothes into something that's a little more garage specific. There we go. My alma mater best hoodie that's uh, well, maybe not too big for me anymore, but we're ready to go. We're done blibber blabbering with you guys. So I'm gonna put you on a little selfie stick thing and I'm gonna carry you guys around and you'll be with me for the entire process. So first things first, let's drain some coolant because that's easy. So I figured first, since you know it's not on the lift, I'm not bringing it up and down. I'm just gonna pop the whole radiator out right now. That way, if that's all I get to do tonight, it'll feel like a major step. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the radiator fans, uh, unbolt the radiator, yank it out. I got one more coolant line to unhook up here, and then we'll yank this guy out, and then we'll get to work on the trans and laying under the car forever and doing all that stuff. So radiator's next, let's get to it.
So I keep forgetting things that I have to do to like take other parts out. Dropping the trans on this, while it is easier than on a regular Miata, which is kind of surprising, uh, you do have to take out a lot of stuff up top just because you can take a lot of the bolts out from the top, which is nice. If you've ever taken a Miata transmission out of a you know BP powered Miata, you have to like angle, you know, take loosen the motor mounts, take the drive shaft halfway or all the way out and like tip the motor back and then you can get the top bolts with a really long extension. This one you can do it from the top. Uh, I don't know why, how it works differently or whatever because the shifter is in the same place, whatever. So to do that, and since I'm redoing this coolant line anyways because it's gonna be in the way of the turbo, I'm just gonna take all the coolant off and I'm gonna undo the wiring harness and kind of just like yeet it off to the side. Uh, it doesn't need to be where it is. I, I won't have to really go back to where it's supposed to be until April, March. So we're gonna put it aside for now. That way I have way more working room and this is a whole lot easier. So let's get to that. So this might make it a little easier to understand why it's easier to take the trans out on a K-swap. So you can see right here is the, or two of the uh, driver side bell housing bolts. Uh, here's the starter for reference. It's backwards on a K-series from a BP. So here's the two on the driver's side. And then if you come over to the passenger side, let's see if we can see them. Regardless, there's one right here and there's one right below it. So they're super easy to get out um, from here and then really the trans comes out so much easier on this car. You can really do it without pulling the wiring harness out like I just did. Uh, it makes life a whole lot easier if it's not there. Uh, I think I've done it twice now. Um, once, twice. And the first whatever times I did it, I didn't take the wiring harness out just because I don't want to go through unplugging all this stuff. It did take like 10 minutes to, to unplug it and pull it so it's easier to leave it in if you're trying to get the car running like same day. But since I have all winter, I might as well pull it out and make my life a little easier. So wiring harness is out. Uh, I'm gonna take the exhaust off from up here uh, as well as the sway bar while I'm here. So uh, I'm just gonna try and finish up the engine bay stuff and then I'm gonna go underneath and start draining fluid like oil from the trans and take the drive shaft out and all that stuff. So let's get this exhaust off. Quick word of note to any of you who are thinking about case swapping your car. I think it's a great swap, uh, especially if you're trying to make over the Miata like 250 horsepower number. But there's a couple things that would definitely improve and Dave from K-Miata, if you're watching this, uh, that flange down there, that, that little guy, which is the same as, or I guess the mating side of this little guy is the worst flange in history. Um, I This is the flange that blew off on me on track uh, the first day we were out. And I was like, all right, maybe I just screwed it up and the, uh, you know, the bolts weren't tight or something. I did it again a couple weeks, months later, just cruising down the highway. Uh, totally blew the gasket to shreds and I vowed that once I went turbo, or if I wasn't gonna go turbo this winter, I was gonna switch everything to V-band. So if you didn't watch the exhaust video from that flange back, everything's already V-band anyways. So really, right now the only flange is that one. And the EFR that I'm buying, which is a 7163, I'm buying with the, it's the Indy spec, so it's got the V-band inlet, V-band outlet, and then I'm gonna have uh, James from the exhaust episode Weld me up a downpipe 
and we're going to modify this guy to also be a V-band because I am done with flanges, uh, like regular 2-bolt, 3-bolt flanges and gaskets and all that stuff. Uh, V-band is the way to go. It might cost a little extra, but it's so much more worth it, especially on this swap. So look into it. Um, I cut my hands every time I take that flange off too, just because of you know where it is and how I have things heat shielded. So uh, V-band should make that so much easier. Next up from here is we're going to go, yeah, let's go underneath underneath the car and we will take the exhaust off. I'm going to leave the back muffler on uh, because I don't need to take anything off back there. The exhaust is already 3 inch so I won't need to upgrade it. Uh, I'm just going to take off the mid pipe, or I guess the middle section, it's not really a mid pipe, uh, but that has the resonator in it. Uh, I'm going to take over off the crossover pipe that goes underneath the transmission and that'll be it. So that's really three bolts. Two V-bands and one support bolt that's holding the uh, uh, crossover tube to the transmission, which is also a transmission bolt, so it's got to come out anyways. So the last thing I'm going to do for the night is take the uh, center console out and my uh, shifter set up so that the trance is pretty much ready to take out once I undo some extra bolts. So take the shift knob off, it's a 400 gram shifter from I can't remember where. I've had this thing since my first Miata, like first mod I did. I don't think I'll ever get rid of this thing. I love it so much. So into the glove box we go. That's it for now. Uh, my wife's on her way home from work, so I'm gonna go inside and chill with her when she gets here. Uh, just gonna clean up real quick around here, but for you guys, I'm gonna cut till the next scene, which is gonna be probably tomorrow for me. Uh, but yeah, so uh, probably start pulling the trans out. Uh, let's see how right I am. Pull the trans out, take the clutch off. Maybe take the flywheel, or the, I gotta take the crank bolt off and have it milled down. So maybe that's what I'll do tomorrow. Yeah, sounds good to me. Alright, cut to tomorrow. So in this step, apparently my audio cut out on the GoPro, so I'm just gonna kinda do a voiceover for you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and take apart the front of the K-Series. So first thing to do is pull this belt off. Uh, nice thing about the K is that it's just a single tensioner. But what I saw is that the belt looks like it's pretty worn down. I don't know if this is because of the crank rubbing and it getting really hot or what. Uh, regardless, I'm just going to replace the whole belt. Uh, the next step here is going to be to remove the crank bolt. If you've ever worked on the K, you know it requires a big impact and this big socket. Uh, you can see it just shake all the dust and rust and all that off of there. Came out no problem on the first try. Uh, crank. When I took it off, I noticed that the crank was actually uh, scraping on the back of, or sorry, on the front of the timing cover. And so I'm going to turn that down to on the mill with my buddy. So I cleaned it up a bit off camera. This was like covered in oil. Uh, the crank bolt was definitely rubbing on the sway bar. Uh, the crank bolt looks a little shiny on the end. And then I don't know if you guys will be able to see it. Probably not. Right here, there's a whole divot in the sway bar. So I'm gonna grind this down because it's got a nice burr on it. Uh, at some point, not today, but the next thing I'm gonna do is pop this cover off. So this is, um, if you're not familiar with K's, 
There's a timing chain tensioner behind this, so you can service it without taking the whole front end apart. Uh, this cover is it's just three bolts, and I think I RTV'd the back. My oil return is actually going to go right here, so I'm going to grab that piece and show you guys real quick. This is the replacement. It is made by two NRS, I'm assuming it's supposed to be pronounced tuners. Uh, it's all it does is replace this cap with the you know this one and then this is a 10 an um, female thread so you'll just thread in your male return line and you'll run that up to the turbo from here which is going to be really clean uh, that comes with this it comes with hardware and it comes with the gasket for the back so we're going to pop this guy off and we're going to switch it over to this so i can feel like i did something Now that I'm done procrastinating, I can start working on the bell housing bolts. So the nice thing here is that, like I said earlier, you can get to these from the top of the transmission uh, and the engine bay instead of having to go from underneath. So this makes it a little bit easier. I just loosen with the breaker bar and the threads are clean enough that I can actually, after a while, back them out with my hands. So it's the same for both sides. There's, uh, I believe, four bolts you can get out of the top and then the rest you can just quickly zip out from the bottom. Way easier than on a regular BP Miata. So that's going to be a wrap on probably this whole episode. Uh, I've got everything out that I need out. Uh, I have an email out to Dave at Kmiata to see if I can buy a new face for that flywheel. It looks like it's a bolt-on unit, so hopefully I can just replace the face. Or if he thinks I can get it resurfaced, I'll just take it off the car and do that. Uh, either way, it's probably going to come off, which kind of sucks, but we'll do that uh, next week. Maybe I'll start putting my gauge pods in. So we'll see what actually happens, but got rev limiter gauge pods and AEM boost gauge, AFR gauge, and oil pressure gauge, oil temperature gauge. Uh, so we'll be putting those into the dash and that's gonna be uh, pretty sweet, but also probably pretty involved on my end. So we'll see. And I've, I've wanted these things forever, so it should be pretty sweet. So stick around for that. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you guys think of this vlog style stuff uh, it's definitely new for us and kind of weird for me to be carrying around this camera for you so uh, it is a little easier than a full-on production so hopefully that's hopefully it works out for everybody but 
Stick around. See you guys next week. And thanks for watching.